So Fallout has tons of ways to dispatch enemies, like guns, melee weapons, and even explosives. But what if you wanted to use something that would give Jigsaw a run for his money? Today I'll be finding out if you can beat Fallout 4 only using traps. Comment down below if you think it's possible and let's get into it. So like with most runs, I make the nicest guy you would never suspect of inviting you to their basement and after greeting the nice man at the door, I set my stats. Okay, so we're gonna do three strength for blacksmith because uh, you can make the bear traps with that and then if you get two ranks in blacksmith, you can actually make the uh, bleeding traps. We're gonna go seven in intelligence because that's how you get the chemist perk. Uh, chemist will allow us to make things like poison cow traps and things like that. And then we're gonna go luck into five because we're gonna go idiot savant. And since we need to level up a lot, the rest of this is just gonna go into um, survival perks later down the road. But don't necessarily need agility. Uh, charisma, we'll leave it one because we can get the better um, sale price and stuff like that. Endurance, we'll probably put to like. Probably a five because we're gonna get hit with a lot of stuff and then the rest will just kind of like dull out across everything. Uh, we'll probably do perception and agility and then leave it at that. Next up was the end of the world and I ran straight to my own personal freezer. After watching my wife get blasted, I made my way to the exit and got jumped by rat roaches. But after they took their fair share of ankle meat, I made my way to sanctuary to begin the mass production phase of the run. Luckily, most of the beginning perks required are all pretty straightforward. I needed Idiot Savant to speed up the leveling, Bloody Mess for damage, and then Blacksmith and Chemist to make the traps I'd be using. But about those traps, how do they work and what do we have to use? For the beginning of the run, I had Bear Traps and Cow Traps, and the perfect test subjects to test these on were the Raiders at the Museum of Freedom. The Cow Traps, although lightweight, don't pack much of a punch. I found the best way to use them was to throw them on the ground and cripple the legs of enemies, causing them to sit down and then await their finish. Bear traps on the other hand, although the damage output was enough to kill a raider outright, they were hard to set. The major issue with the bear traps was the fact that anything could set them off. If a piece from another bear trap landed in a set one, the whole trap was useless. So for the most part, the best way to use the bear trap was just to run in front of the enemy and throw the trap down at their feet and cross your fingers it worked. But with enough trial and error, I made my way to the Minutemen and then stole the power armor from the roof and left them to deal with the raiders outside. Don't worry Preston, I'll be back. So now that I knew what I could use to deal damage, now came more crafting and lots of perks. I'll leave it on the screen so you can see, but basically it was as much damage reduction and extra health mixed in with bloody mess for more damage. Then came the long journey to Diamond City, and after getting there and getting the info on where Nick Valentine was as I got lost trying to find it by myself, it was time to try the Triggerman hideout. And I was genuinely surprised at how this was going. Between the damage of the bear trap and the power armor soaking up the damage from the submachine guns, I actually made it all the way to Valentine but on the way out, I ran out of bear traps. That was the other major issue with these traps. Each bear trap weighed eight pounds, so at most I could carry about 50, and this was wall wearing power armor, which makes your strength 11, so you had the most carrying capacity minus perks. So I had to restart the entire area. But after freeing Valentine again and not killing everyone, I still ran out while fighting Skinny Malone. Luckily I was towards the middle of the vault, so I just had to run out and grab more traps before returning and killing the rest of the Triggermen. The damage output was fine, but because I could only carry so many traps at a time, this was what I was worried about the most heading into later parts of the run. Now that Nick and I were free, we decided to kick in some abandoned house in Diamond City and I got a dog high on some experimental kush. Then I made the long journey to Fort Hagen, or as I like to call it, Megabyte because I was gonna take a megabyte out of that ass. Kellogg didn't even know what was coming. The fort wasn't too bad, actually. The bear traps were doing all right damage and I was able to run straight for the elevator, skipping most of the top floor. To be honest, I did a lot of running through this area as I wanted to make sure I'd have enough traps for the big man himself. And between getting stuck in quarters and running past mounted turrets, I did eventually make it to Kellogg. But while I was expecting some crazy shootout, all I got was a fast kill with a couple well-placed traps. So after ripping his brain out and checking his search history, I headed all the way to Good Neighbor to swim through his brain. But I did find out about some scientists in a sea of radiation that wanted to stay hidden, so I was off to ruin his day. 
On the way through my bathroom on taco night and past some spicy water, I busted in Virgil's house and asserted my dominance by shining my headlamp in his face. It must have worked as he spilled the location on a courser, a super terminator like being capable of being killed by bear traps, so I was off to check if Virgil's advice was true. I arrived at Green Tech Genetics and began my assault on the gunners blocking my path. The bear traps were doing decent damage still, it took about two to kill a gunner, but then reality hit. That was only 25 of these guys at most if every single bear trap hit, so I'd have to save tons of these for the courser at the end, so I only killed what I had to and ran by everything else. I ended up getting myself lost and facing everyone at once, but then found the stairway leading me to the end. I even skipped past the obnoxious private gunner and was on my way to kill the courser. And I'm actually surprised that this courser fight didn't go as bad as I thought it would. Besides missing a ton of traps, I got the courser stuck in a corner and just kept throwing stuff at his feet. I collected the courser chip I came for and made the run over to the railroad, being the only people who seemed to be able to decipher this damn thing. But they cooperated enough to let me in. If only they knew what a mistake this would be later on. So now after returning back to Virgil, there was only one thing to consider. Who do I side with? The Minutemen were still trapped in the museum and I had something else in store for them this time. But then who else? First I decided to go save the Minutemen from their captivity and the Brotherhood of Steel were nice enough to roll through and sort out the Raider epidemic. And thankfully the death Deathclaw that decided to show up went down to a couple of poorly placed bear traps. So I freed the Minutemen and upon meeting back up with them told them about my plan to build a teleporter. But they wouldn't work with me because they didn't know me which hurt my feelings. I got you, Preston. Don't worry. So I went to the railroad to see if they would help me, and they said the exact same thing Garvey did. Looks like I was going to have to do some side missions. So I went back to Preston because I figured his side quest would be the shortest, and it was, but not because of the way you think. It turns out that if you go to a settlement that Preston tells you about and something happens to the quest giver, you fail the quest. But... Preston still promotes you to general, and that's all you need for them to help you build a teleporter. Funny how this game works sometimes. Now, inside the Institute, I made my way to Father, and instead of ending him right here, right now, like I normally do, I decided to actually talk to him, and join him in his cause to the Purge the Commonwealth. Because that's really what we're doing here, don't kid yourself. Father had me go talk to some of the higher-ups, and then came my first field mission, capturing a runaway synth and teamed up with a courser who decided to blow up a vertibird for fun. But after dispatching some Brotherhood members, we made our way through the makeshift walkways and found out that Power Armor did not like these water planks. After a while of trapping raiders and doing some unconventional parkour, I made it to the top of the camp where my quarry was. And instead of fighting, I seduced him straight to sleep. But then I had to fight his friends, however the courser told me I did a great job and I could return back to Father. Cleaning up the commonwealth one mission at a time. Now that I had proved my worth to the father, it was time to be put to the test and take the fight to the factions of the commonwealth. It was time to retake Bunker Hill and capture more runaway synths. Now, this was crazy. I had brotherhood members, railroad agents, and coursers shooting all over the place. I tried to conserve as many bear traps as possible and moved inside Bunker Hill, but the bullets continued to fly. So while running low on supplies, I ran straight for the synths and started speaking an ancient tentacle language to put them to sleep so a courser could recover them. And, and after I showed I was a monster running away, Father invited me to another meeting, and in a roundabout way, I was made next of kin in the case of his demise. I don't think the savage running around with bear traps is mentally stable to run this place, but I'm not going to argue. So with the new promotion pending, I had to make sure that the Institute would have enough power to run forever. And it turns out the Brotherhood of Steel did have such a power source, but getting it would be tricky. And by tricky, I meant teleporting straight into their power station and fighting my way to the source while bullets and lasers were shot everywhere. You know, your normal Sunday walk through the park. After my walk, I went to the super battery and had to fight my way through some more robots. But I got a little worried here as I thought I had to deal with turrets mounted on the ceiling. And, you know, bear traps can't exactly hit things that are in the air. But luckily, Todd Howard, in his infinite wisdom, decided that turrets don't have the same privilege as other robots, so they did not count for quest completion. So, with the robots that actually matter destroyed, I was able to make my way back to Father and then go recruit a scientist on his behalf. Apparently this guy is super important, but you never actually see him after this point. For all I know, it was a ghost on the other side of this door. 
After talking with a possible Spectre, I was then sent on a small errand list of planning the end of the Commonwealth as we know it, but the most eventful thing that happened here was putting together a radio puzzle. But once I conquered said puzzle, I met back up with the homies and we decided the end was nigh. It was time to take the fight to the railroad and Brotherhood of Steel. So, starting with the kids who lived in a church basement, I just walked in and started laying traps, taking them out one by one. By this point, I had so much damage reduction that I didn't even care about all of the guns in the room trained on me. However, Deacon proved to be a threat. Not in terms of damage, but in the way of a possible run-ender. Certain NPCs in this game don't set off traps or mines, and the bear trap is one of those things that Deacon doesn't set off. And for a while, I didn't know what else to do. So I tried the only logical thing and just tried to use the other trap I had. And wouldn't you know, Caltrops actually worked! He can't dodge small spiky traps. So I just had Deacon dance on bits of steel and he eventually joined his comrades in the sky. So now, after reporting back to Father, he told me it was time for our last fight. And to win, I would have to infiltrate the Brotherhood of Steel and hijack Liberty Prime, their big communist hating robot. So I teleported in and got to work. I had to blow up some shield generators to allow Sense to join the fight, and surprisingly, if you drop Caltrops on top of something stationary, it still does damage, meaning I was able to blow up the generators and keep the run alive. Next came the heist of the century. I got some Sense to help me guard the top of Liberty Prime while the Brotherhood members were kept at bay, and once the giant robot was on our side, we got him to shoot down the Brotherhood flagship, ending the majority of the faction in one fell swoop. Now that we were the superior force left alive, I returned to Father only to watch him take a forever nap and end the run only using traps. This run was strange. Learning to set the bear traps was one of the hardest things ever, and who would have guessed the weapon that I wrote off in the beginning would be the run saver twice. As always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you're new or if you want to see more challenge videos. If you have any suggestions for future runs, make sure to leave them down below. And as always, I have been Chris from Crisis Gaming, and I will see you on the next one.